Good evening, this is Bell Gerald, and we are back with some more X-Plane 11 in virtual reality. All right, howdy folks, we're back in Gran Canaria, and this, of course, is the Bell 222. And I just wanted to record a relatively quick video to discuss some of the updates that Cowan Sim has put in this helicopter, which actually makes a really good thing so much better. I'm like still blown away at this. This is really, really good. Okay, so you may recall this helipad. We were here with the Chinook last time, and of course we're here with the 222. So we're going to head over to the 222 check out some of the new features here so everything with this helicopter works as you previously expected to see nothing's changed as far as that goes um, but a number of the back-end changes that he made were things like the sound and of course you know tweaking the flight model the tail rotor and so on and so forth um, but a lot of the things that he added in there were to do with this little uh, checklist that he's got in the door here so let me hop into the seat and we'll pop open the checklist here okay now when you click on a checklist of course it'll appear in VR in front of your face like this but then you can use your touch controller and move the checklist to wherever it is that you want it to stay so we're just gonna put it right there I know it's a little crooked but you know deal with it all right so New checklist. Everything's been remodeled on this, and you can see some of the things that he added. Uh, the manual, the actual checklist on how to start the bird, uh, park and secure rotors, so that's like all the various coverings and rotor tie-downs and whatnot. Toggle rain, which I currently have on, and I'm going to try and show that to you. Uh, as you can see, we've got some clouds around here. I need to find some that are actually producing rain and we'll check that out this is probably one of the coolest additions that he's added is the medical loadout so you recall the original luxury loadout that we have like that right and I'm sure you remember we can add pilots and passengers so you can see my co-pilot there you can see our lovely ladies and their gentlemen in the back and that's all pretty cool so we're going to hide the passengers again. But what happens when I toggle medical? Look at that. Wow. All right, let's get a better look at that. We're going to go back outside. Yeah, I know I'm walking all over the place here. And we're going to walk to the back, open the door. Oh, almost hit myself with the door there. And we're actually going to sit down in this seat back here. So there we go, look at that. So this is a completely new layout that he has made and everything is absolutely flawless. You can see he even went through the time to add all the various monitors. So you can see like your heart rate there and everything. That's pretty cool. I used to do EKGs by the way, so I kind of know what all of that means. It looks like this person, uh, they're having some issues. <laughs> There's like no heart rate there for just a half a second. <laughs> but that is so neat that he added all of this equipment in there and I can only imagine how long it took him to code this. We're actually going to leave it in a medical mode for this brief flight here because I kind of think this is cool. One thing I should mention, he has not yet added uh, people to the medical layout, but that will be coming at some point in time in the future, he says. All right, so let's go back outside and we'll close the door. So there we go. We are now a private uh, helicopter for life flight. We get back in our pilot seat and I'm actually going to close this side door here. There we go. You'll notice that the sounds changed slightly. He did work on the sounds, as I mentioned, uh, using FMOD. So everything has had tweaks and updates here and there, and it really does sound good. Uh, you can see radio GPS panel for those of you who have the GTN 750, all that's in there. You can remove all the doors, which I believe you could do before. We're going to keep our doors on, though, because knowing me, I'll fall out. Uh, the instrument panel you can still change to 
black or to gray. I kind of prefer the black one, so I keep that there. Avatab, of course, we can put on Avatab or we can hide Avatab. So we got the tiny Avatab there. We got the large Avatab there. We could rotate Avatab. There we go. And we can hide it again. But this right here, this whole section in the bottom, this alone is worth the price of admission. Folks, this is unheard of. Adjusting the VR head position. For those of us who fly in VR, that's probably our chief complaint in any aircraft in X-Plane. Unless the developer has a way to modify it so that you can adjust for torso length, it's impossible to you know get just the right sitting position without tweaking things and resetting your view and so on and so forth this changes that for every single person who uses this helicopter you can now use these little controls to move your viewpoint up down left right forward backwards and here's the best part when you're done messing around with all that and you find just your perfect head position you can save it and then after you save it of course you're going to want to reload the helicopter but it's going to remember it from that point onward and maybe down the road you decide you know this head position's fine but I'd actually really want to be sitting a little bit more forward well you can do that you can change that and then click save again and it will remember it this is unheard of, and this is exactly the kind of VR quality of life thing that we have needed here in X-Plane. And I dare say pretty much all flight sims should be putting something like this if they claim to have a VR mode. I told him that um, something like this needs to be its own plugin, and I think a number of other people have also uh, mentioned it to him that it needs to be its own plugin so that it's compatible with every single aircraft that you have in VR. But for the 222, just know that you get this with you, and this is a godsend. I absolutely love this. All right, but I've waxed poetically enough, so let's go ahead and put the clipboard back. So we're going to take off and we're going to fly off in that direction because as you can see there's more clouds over there than they are there because the other thing that I want to show you are the rain effects. Before I show you the rain effects I should mention that it's not perfect. Uh, for example it doesn't appear at night from my understanding and there are some slight issues with the wipers the way that it looks when it's interacting with the wipers. But I want to show you anyway what the effect itself looks like because I think that is worth seeing. So, without rambling on too much here, let me just make sure everything is kosher. Yep, we're looking pretty good. All right, so let's go ahead and take off. Nice sprightly takeoff there for us. We'll get the gear up. And we're gonna turn around this way. Now you can see there's one small cloud there, but there's a whole bunch of other clouds on the other side. So I'm thinking we are gonna head this way. Yeah, right about here should do the trick. And of course we can set up uh, auto trim or we can just turn on our autopilot for the purposes of my flying right now. I'm just gonna turn on the autopilot. So there we go. Now I can let go of the collective and the cyclic. I can adjust for the pedals still. We'll keep gaining altitude here. We'll bring it up to, let's see, where are we right now? About 4,700. We'll bring it up close to 6,000 feet, because I think that should be high enough to get over these mountains here. I'm going to pull the collective back just to touch those so that we're climbing at a less sharp angle. All right, so hopefully this should take us right down that valley and just over that mountain. And as a matter of fact, we'll go to the outside view for a little bit and we'll come right back.
All right, so we are closing in on 6,000 feet, so we'll slowly bring the collective down a little bit, and we'll actually turn a little to the right with the pedals. Man, this island is just so beautiful. This entire scenery is just so majestic, and I love the fact that the clouds just kind of nestle themselves in there. That is just perfect. Really can't ask for better when it comes to scenery, and Orbix is king when it comes to that. All right, let's go ahead and we'll get our controls back to their default position. We'll turn the autopilot off. Okay, there we go. Everything is off and we're slowly drifting to the right. I want to go over um, this peak directly ahead because I think I see some storm laden clouds on the other side. And that's kind of my whole point here is I want to show you the rain. I don't dare want to show you down there, though. That would be bad. That would be really bad. But yeah, as I have been saying, he's managed to take what was already a really good helicopter and make it better. One of the things that he's done as well, he's, he's actually changed the textures for this helicopter. So right now what I'm flying are the 2K textures, but honestly, I really cannot tell a difference between the 2K and the 4K, except when it comes to FPS. I'm actually getting better FPS using the 2K textures. It still looks just as good both inside and out, and I think that he's really hit upon something that is basically a winner here. So a simple change like that and it's made that much of a difference in my flying this helicopter. All right, I think we've got a cloud down here, so we're probably going to need to drop like a rock to get to the deck. So here's what we'll do. We'll go around the right-hand side of this cloud here, because X-Plane is notorious where if you even barely touch a cloud, all of a sudden everything is like total whiteout. We'll see if we can get under this cloud. I'm pretty sure there's going to be some rain there, and that way we should be able to see the rain effects. Let me make sure we're not over-torquing or over-speeding here. We're coming down at about 120 knots, roughly. And what is that? 2,500 feet per minute descent. Woo! That's pretty intense. All right, here we go. This is what I'm looking for. So we'll swing ourselves around. And there's a little village over there just under that cloud that I think it might be raining. See, this is the kind of thing where Microsoft Flight Simulator has now spoiled me because they actually will graphically show the areas where it's raining. Hopefully, when X-Plane finally gets on board with a better weather engine, that may be something that they might introduce to us, and that'll certainly help with the realistic depiction of weather. But it is what it is right now, so I'm not going to complain too much. I am, however, going to slow down a little bit. So let's uh, trim the nose up a bit here. All right. Rain, rain, where are you? Normally I'm trying to get the rain to go away, but right now we need it so I can show you these effects. Alright, I think this might be a stormy area over here, so we're going to head to the darker part of the cloud. And hopefully we'll get lucky. Hopefully we'll check out some rain. Of course, like anything else, uh, when it comes to X-Plane and weather, this is where you tend to lose a lot of your FPS. It is unfortunate, but there's not really much we can do about that. I'm actually going to raise collective a little bit here and see if we can get a little bit closer to this cloud. Ah, here we go. That's what I'm looking for. Okay, so look at that. First thing I can tell you is I am seeing this in both eyes in VR. Now that was a major complaint that I have with the Librain plugin. Um, I don't know if it's been fixed. I haven't uh, tried anything that has Librain for a little bit of a while. However, the problem that I had with that is the fact that it just doesn't appear in both eyes. It usually appears in one eye, and I don't know if that is related to my using an AMD graphics card, or if it's because I'm using the Oculus Rift S or what, but I never actually found a solution to it. 
The solution that uh, Common Sim has found for this works. I can see it in both eyes, and as you can see, it is on every window. The side windows, the front, little top window here. But here's the best part. Now I'm actually slowing down, and I'm going to try and see if I can bring us to a hover in a place where I know it's raining. And I want you to take a look at the direction in which the rain is falling. Now remember, this is a helicopter, so not only are you influenced by, you know, what's going on outside with the weather, but you also have to contend with the rotor downwash. So that's going to determine the angle at which your raindrops are falling, as it were. And we are completely hovering right now. We are turning around a little bit, so I'm going to push us forward to back where I knew the rain is falling. And then we're just going to kind of hold it here. And I want you to take a look at the angle of the raindrops as we slow down here. So we'll nose up, lower the collective a little bit here. Try to see if we can bring her into a hover. You'll notice everything's going horizontally right now because we've still got a fair amount of forward speed. But as we slow down, you'll notice that because of the rotor downwash, all of a sudden, the rain is changing direction. So look at that. That is so cool. I've never seen that before. And that's an, actually an ingenious way of coding in the rain effect. So if I get her perfectly still here, you can see now the rain is falling totally vertically due to, of course, well, rain just doing rain things as well as the rotor downwash. And it's on all the windows. We're actually moving backwards a little bit here. So you'll see it's uh, starting to angle itself but that is a really innovative little solution that Cowan Sim came up with to deal with this issue and of course the fact that it appears in VR is a major plus for any of us who utilize VR and my helicopter's complaining because I'm below the landing gear speed and I really should have the gear down if I'm like this but it thinks we're landing we are not so yeah, that is really cool, and that's probably one of the bigger things that I wanted to show you about the uh, 2.50 version of this helicopter, is the fact that he added that. Now, you will notice that it is all or nothing. Pretty much when the sim recognizes that there are raindrops falling outside, it will do the rain effect. It will draw the rain effect for you. If the sim says there's no raindrops currently outside, then it just simply disappears. There's no, like, drying time or anything like that. But then if you think about it, if you were flying like this in real life, chances are the rotor downwash would have blown the rain away anyway. So it's not too critical to miss, basically. And I think it's a pretty cool solution. I'm actually kind of happy with that. It... It's not that often that I fly in rain, I'll put it that way, but when I do, yeah, this works. This works. This is a very good solution that they found for this. All right, so we are going to head back to that helipad where we took off from, and I'll try to remember some of the other changes that he's made to this thing. Um, I'm actually drawing a blank. I think I showed you a lot of the major changes that have been made. Uh, the sound the textures, the fact that you now have 2K textures as opposed to 4K textures. And I think there's even different textures as far as the rain goes. If you want to have like less FPS impactful rain textures, you do have that option as well. Uh, if I recall correctly, we came from that direction. So we're probably going to go around this cloud again. Get some more altitude because that mountain's looking rather imposing. Yeah, there we go. There's the back end of the cloud that I was looking for. All right, so we'll swing around this way and we'll head back this way. The audio sounds prime time. I am in love with the sounds that this thing has. And I know a few people have actually been uh, suggesting to Cowan Sim to make like a weaponized version of the Airwolf livery. He hasn't gotten around to doing that yet, but then considering all the other stuff that he's working on, that's like the least that I would expect, you know? I'm not worried about not having a weaponized version of Airwolf. 
If I want combat helicopters, well, there's always DCS for that. But yeah, the changes that he's added to this thing, in my opinion, absolutely massive. Especially that uh, quality of life improvement for us VR users, being able to just move our default cockpit position. You might ask, well, why does that matter? Especially if you're not a VR user, you might be wondering, well, what is it that makes that special? The thing is, when we go to the outside view and we come back into the cockpit, the sim reads whatever is on file for the default VR pilot position. And if we have adjusted that position when we first got into the helicopter or any aircraft for that matter, it doesn't remember it. And that is the real selling point to what Cowan Sim has done here. The fact that now it does remember that your head was, you know, that particular height from the seat or in front of the seat is massive. And like I said, nobody has ever done that before, to my knowledge. Common Sim's the first one that's been able to pull it off, and it's so worth it. It is absolutely worth it. It's like I said earlier, it's worth the price of admission for me. That feature alone makes this helicopter worth it. But then, of course, I gotta be honest, I do love this helicopter. I love almost every single thing about it. So I guess you could say I am biased, but uh, I can definitely see the hard work that Cowan Sim has put into this, and it shows. It really does show. Alright, let me see if I can find our helipad. I want to say it's directly ahead. Hope I'm not wrong. I do remember that small cloud there, so we're going to continue heading in this direction, and hopefully we'll be going the right way. One thing I will do, though, is I will put it back on autopilot and go back to the outside view. So there we go. Let's make sure everything is kosher. We'll also lower the collective a little bit, so that way we're also lowering a bit of altitude as we bring ourselves in to the helipad. And we'll go back outside. Okay, so yes, I think that is where our helipad is, so we'll go ahead and turn the autopilot off. Actually had us making a very slow left turn here, so that kind of put us off course. But this is good nonetheless, because we need to be approaching from this side anyway. So you'll notice that uh, red brick building, which I showed off when I was um, doing the Chinook video. Well, our helipad is off to the left of that. You can't see it right now because it is behind the peak of that mountain. But that's where we're going to be going. So let's uh, start trimming ourselves up here. And we're also going to need to slow down. I don't remember what the landing gear limit speed is, but I'm going to go with 80 knots just because there's a mark on my airspeed indicator there. So we'll get the gear down now gear is in transit. Okay, we got three green and locked. And I think I can start to see the little fuel tank that indicates where our helipad is. So we're going to bring her in. And there we go. So yeah, if you have been on the fence about the Bell 222, I'm going to highly recommend that you pick it up. With all the various features that uh, Cowan Sim has been adding to this thing, 
it is so worth it. I know a lot of people like to throw the term study level around, and I'll be honest with you, I really don't like the term because I'm not actually studying to be a real-life helicopter pilot, but I do prefer in-depth. And as far as that goes, this helicopter is very in-depth. I mean, you can do a full cold and dark startup, you can do emergency procedures, you can practice auto rotations. To me, that's all the kind of stuff that I would like to see in a helicopter. Now, the fact that this thing now also has a medical loadout tells me that there are plans in the future to add even more features to this. So think about uh, the prospect of like, you know, rescuing people through X-Plane. That is kind of intriguing, and I know one certain heli simmer who would thoroughly enjoy something like that. So as time goes on, I'm sure we'll get more information as to what's coming, but I would highly, highly suggest that if you were thinking about this helicopter, yes, definitely give it a shot. It is so worth it. Not to mention it's so easy to fly, too, as far as helicopters go, that is. Of course, We'll hold off on that uh, judgment as we see how well I bring this thing in to land. So let me aim for that second helipad, which is where we took off from. We are facing the right direction, thankfully, so we'll just drop her down. Get a little bit closer. There we go. We're like barely pushing forward here. All right, now I need to slide to the right and try not to hit that windsock. Okay, right about here should be good. We'll slide a little bit more to the right and we'll bring her in. And we're down, there we go. All right, so yeah, like I said, this wasn't intended to be a full review video because of course we've already done a review of the Bell 222, but just kind of an update video so that you have an idea as to what's been improved upon in version 2.5. The link, of course, is going to be in the video description below. You can read uh, Cowan Sims' blog on their website for all of the updates and changes that have been added to this thing. And, of course, you can purchase uh, both models of the helicopter either separately or together in a package from their website. Definitely recommended. Two thumbs up. Ten out of ten. Whatever you want to assign to it. Five stars. It's all worth it. It is totally all worth it. Alrighty, folks. But that will do it for me. This has been Bell Geode. And like I said, this was just a quick video to show you some of the updates of the Bell 222. So happy flying to you all. And I will catch you soon. Ciao.